everyone, my name is Sam and thanks for checking out this video. Make sure to hit the subscribe button down below, hit the bell notification, and give the video a thumbs up. Oh, so I want to talk to you all about the books that I plan on reading in the month of December. I actually have it off from my full-time job, so I only have like two shifts a week maximum. So I have lots of time. So that being said, I am taking this month to work on my books that I know are ARCs or that I have the physical copy and there is no audiobook available. Because I am normally a fan of like reading the physical book and then when I have to go like walk the dogs or drive or whatever, I keep going on the book listening to the audio. So it's kind of annoying that I have to like chop things up when I don't have an audiobook option during the regular months. So those tend to get like delayed unless there's like a deadline on them. So that is why this month I'm focusing on books without audiobook options basically. There's also a couple books in here that I just like I need to get done even though they do have an audiobook and then there's a couple in here that I think like they're just gonna be like regularly like December e reads just because of maybe that's when I first read them and I think it was a really good setting to read them in or because of the topic that they are or covered or maybe they're holiday season -y. you know what I mean. So the first book that I plan on reading this month is actually first three, A Curious Beginning, A Perilous Undertaking, and A Treacherous Curse by Deanna Rayborn. This is book one, two, and three in the Veronica Speedwell series. I've read all three. I absolutely adore this series. It's so freaking underhyped. I wish more people read it. And I did originally read it last, I think the first two books in December, and I'm like obsessed with this series. So I want to reread these three and be ready for A Dangerous Collaboration, which I think comes out March. I want to say March 15th. But I'm very excited for that release. And I don't know, they don't necessarily, they really don't take place, have anything to do with Christmas. It's just historical fiction. And I seem to really do have with historical fiction in winter weather. So very excited. And I'll be honest, I think I read the first two books in about eight hours combined. Like I literally finished A, Curi a Curious Beginning and picked up A Treacherous or A Perilous Undertaking right away. And I, yeah, it took me about eight hours total. So maybe I can do that again. I also plan on continuing on my kind of catch up of Lindsay Fay. I've owned quite a few of her books now for a while and I kind of just got reminded a couple months ago when I found out that she has another book coming out in 2019 and I went oh god I still haven't read all those books. So last month I did a book that I didn't end up loving but I have a really good feeling about The Gods of Gotham and I I would blurb it but I feel like the summer on the back it just like gives a really good vibe. So 1845 New York forms its first police force. The Great Potato Famine hits Ireland. These two events will change New York City for forever. Timothy Wilde tends a bar, saving every dollar in hopes of winning the girl of his dreams. But when his dreams are destroyed by a fire that devastates the downtown Manhattan, he is left with no choice but to accept a job in the newly minted New York City Police Department. Returning from rounds one night, Tim collides with a girl with no more than ten, of no more than ten years old, covered in blood. And I don't, I don't want to read the rest of it. So that's just where it's going. I'm kind of a sucker for these mysteries. And I think my issue with the book that I read of hers last month was that it was an attempt to add a Sherlock Holmes retelling, which didn't work for me. And I don't think that really has that aspect. It's just like a murder mystery, New York, old, old towny New York City. So I have very good feelings about this and I'm really excited to give it a go. And despite it not really being in holiday season, I plan on getting to Not Even Bones this month by Rebecca Schrafer. I think I tried to get to this one. Or maybe I got it after. I, I want to say I tried to get to it uh, around like Halloween. I, I picked it up that same month, but I really tried and just didn't get to it. It is also kind of the victim of it doesn't have an audiobook, so I can't pick it up and like kind of continue. I have to keep picking up and putting it down. So September and October were really busy for me for work. So that just didn't work. So I'm going to read it this month. I've heard like rave reviews from my friend. I think it was H Heather that read it. I want to say my friend Heather. My friend Heather or Haley read it and raved about it and she's also a Canadian author and the sequel got a title so I'm very very curious about this one and it seems very dark and like it takes a special type of monster to dissect dead people and sell them without guilt and it was originally blurbed like before it came out as like Dexter meets this savage song which like that concept is very interesting to me and I've, I've heard nothing but good things so it's also not super super big so I could probably like whip this out in definitely one day so I'm definitely gonna give this one a go I also really, really want to get to Keeper of the Lost Cities by Shannon Messenger. My friend Meg absolutely loves this series. And there is a challenge in TBR and Beyond to um, a game board challenge and you roll the dice and whatever board piece you land on, that is your challenge. And one of them was Friend Rex. So I'm going to take the plunge. I've heard really good things about this series. I see it all over the place. I haven't picked it up myself because the copies I've seen are very like mass market paperback. And I hate those kind of copies, but we'll see if I like it. And if I end up liking it, then, you know. 
I probably just end up buying them. But I know it's a bigger series, and one of the, I want to say the seventh book just came out. So I'm all for jumping into another massive series. I've got a, I'll have a Throne of Glass series done at the end of this, this month, so why not? I also plan on getting to a crown, a crown of wishes by Roshni Chotsky. I, the, a Star Touch Queen. I don't understand the Goodreads rating whatsoever. It's beautifully written. It's a very interesting book too because it is a different mythology kind of retelling. It was, it had different vibes, and I really enjoyed that. It was kind of refreshing. And I know this is a companion. I don't know a ton about it other than there's like a princess and she's like a prisoner of war. And I'm assuming. I think someone told me there's like a tournament or something that comes up, which as soon as I heard that, I went, oh my God, if there's a tournament with magic, I'm so trash for this. So considering the consistent writing I saw between Arusha and the Star Touch Queen, we already know I'm going to like the writing. So I'm very curious to see what the plot is. I also love the cover of this. It's kind of like metallic-y and like the spine too. Oh, it's so good. And I'm curious to see if I'm going to like this because I know she also released like a bound up novella bind up thing of short stories kind of kind of like stars above i think so i'm really curious so hopefully i like that because then i can read that i was also lucky enough to receive an arc of the gilded wolves by roshni chotsky and it comes out january 15th so i want to get it done <laughs> and I, it just sounds hella cool there's a heist in paris that's, that's like that's it that's all you need to know that's all i need to know anyways to be like cool i have to read this asap and the cover is so pretty but Roshni is always, oh, I think it's, I'm saying it right. Sorry. If it's Roshani, I'm sorry. I thought it was Roshni because I think I heard Rick Ryer and say it like that. Anyways, this beautiful woman, um, she's going to be in the TBR Beyond group in January and she has the Guild of Wolves coming out. And I'm just, I'm so excited about this book. Like I just, I get like one of the things, like the Six of Crows is like a masterpiece on its own with like the characters and everything. But I, I'm such trash for heists and then a historical fiction aspect thrown into it. Huh! And then like like a ragtag team of like lovable misfits, even better. And then we know I love her writing. So I'm going to anticipate this being a five out of five stars and then I will push people out of the way on opening day to get to the bookstore and get the first copy. I also plan on getting to my arc of Song of the Dead by Sarah Glenn Marsh. I received this in September through work and I really feel bad. I, I needed it for, for my work conference, but I just haven't had a chance. Like I said, September and October were hot messes for me at work. I was all over the place. So I haven't had a chance to read it. But December, going to sit down and read it. It comes out in January. I think on the same day as The Gilded Wolves, actually, on the 19th, I want to say. And mid-January, either way. And... I freaking, it's another one where I don't understand the Goodreads rating whatsoever. I'm very excited that I have this and I'm hearing actually the people that did read it, my friends who did get arcs of it as well, liked it actually more than the first one. So that's made me even more excited. And I'm very excited to see what the finished copy looks like because like the covers of this series, oh my god, they did such a pretty job. I'm continuing on my reread of Kingdom on Fire series, so I definitely will be picking up A Sorrow, Fierce and Falling this month. This series is so underhyped. I just don't even understand it. And like even like, no, the Goodreads ratings I think are actually like decent. I think it's like a 3.7 for the first book, which isn't terrible. I think it should be higher, but not terrible. And then no one talks about this book though. No one talks about this series whatsoever. So Victorian England with like X-Men and Harry Pottery vibes combined. And there's a very big betrayal at the end of the first one. And this just kind of picks up with a woman kind of paving the way in a relatively sexist world not relatively, a sexist world with Queen Victoria kind of at her side. And I'm so excited for this reread because I legitimately don't remember anything else. Also, I'm obviously going to pick up Kingdom of Ash this month. It hurt my soul that I didn't pick it up last month, even though I just didn't have time. And everyone knows, has told me that I'm going to cry. So it's going to be a fun few days, but I'm definitely picking it up. It's the wrap up to the Throne of Glass series and I don't know what to do with you. I am i can't blurb this series anymore. It's just been, it's been done so bajillions of times. So reading it. Now I was planning on reading this book anyways, but then the TBR and Beyond group held a poll for like a holiday read and this one got picked. So kudos to everyone who voted for that. So I don't have to read an extra book this month, but I plan on doing a reread of The Afterlife of Holly Chase by Cynthia Hand. I read this book last Christmas and it's supposed to be like, um, uh, oh, what's the story called? Um, oh my god, what's it originally called? The Ebenezer Scrooge story. Anyways, you know who Ebenezer Scrooge. It's just a retelling, like, kind of in a contemporary setting. It's fun. It's light. It's an enjoyable read. It's also, for me, like, I have a hard time finding stuff around this holiday season that's just, like, generic -y holiday, not, like, 
associated to a specific celebration of a denomination so this was just like a fun one that i could just like enjoy and like relate to the character of and it's just fun like the paranormal aspects of it so definitely gonna give it a reread and uh enjoy myself for a day i am definitely going to pick up a lady's guide to petticoats and piracy this month by mackenzie lee it is a sequel and i believe the last book in the montague sibling series the sequel to gentleman's guide to vice and virtue all I know is that, that it follows her main sister and she's going a pirating and she's kind of breaking a lot of gender norms. And I believe it was also confirmed that the main character is asexual as well, which a lot of people were freaking out, really, really excited about. And I'm hoping it does a good job. And I'm very excited. And I love these covers, like the little doodles. Like, it's just, it's just so fun. So I am 150% getting to An Assassin's Guide to Love and Treason by Virginia Boger this month. I am so excited about this. All I really know is that our main character, I'm assuming it's the girl, is kind of brought along with her father to court. And then there's an assassination attempt made on the King of England by her father, I believe. And then she's kind of being, I'm assuming by this dude, like investigated and like interviewed and being accused of being a part of it. And I'm very excited for it. I haven't really heard any talk about it though, but the one person I know that got an arc said she freaking loved it. So I'm very, very excited about that. I really desperately hope I can get to Sweet Black Waves this month by Christina Perez. Part of the reason being she has two books coming out in 2019, so I want to know if I enjoy her writing. But also, it's a Tristan and Isolde YA romance retelling, which I'm kind of trash for the Tristan and Isolde thing. I don't know why specifically that one, but I'm trash for it and my friend Joanne was nice enough to give me her copy and I've seen the cover for the sequel I for the life of me can't remember what it's called anymore and it's like it just looks very pretty so I'm very very excited two proud kingdoms stand on opposite shores with only blood history between them which you know let's be real that's just basically everyone's world history um but I'm also kind of trash for just like historical fiction in general and so this is, again, one that I would have read her sooner if there was an audiobook available for me to switch back and forth, but there wasn't, and there still isn't. So definitely gonna, like, just block out a whole day to sit down and read this. I will slap myself silly this month. At, at the end, I didn't read Wondersmith. I won't know what to do with myself at that point. I will have failed. Just failed everyone. But continuation of Nevermore, The Trials of Morgan Crow. I'm assuming because of the, the name of it and the wondersmith that is talked about in the first book, there's going to be some like real challenges for Morgan Crow specifically rather than her trying to fit into this world. It's going to kind of act and morph to her, I have a feeling. And I'm hearing nothing but fantastic things. So very, very excited. This is another one where actually I think I found out it's, I hate that they did this. They released it earlier in the UK and the book in the UK and Australia. And then they released it like three weeks later in the rest of the world. And I think they're doing the same thing with the audiobook. So I'm going to keep an eye on that because I actually really, really enjoyed the first audiobook. But the audiobook is available for purchase in Australia last I think I saw, but not available in Canada for I don't even know what reason at this point. But going to get to it and hopefully there will be an audiobook I can listen to and follow along with. And finally, I really, really hope to get to Fox this month by Nadine Brandes. Part of the reason being the cover. Second of all, it's supposed to be, I think, based on, like, the summary alone, something to do with the Guy Fox gunpowder plot. And we've established with me talking about Assassin's Guide to Love and Treason, I'm trash for heists and plots and assassination attempts, especially when it comes to, like, medieval or Victorian era. Total, like, that's my trash. And she also has a book coming out in 2019 called Romanov, which, if you don't know me, hi, I'm Sam, and I am obsessed with Outlander and Russian anything basically so i'm very excited for that book so i'm hoping i can get at least a feeling whether or not i like this book or not i hope i do i will at least know if the author's writing is going to work for me so i'm very excited for this one but yeah there's like an assassination plot attempt i think on like the whole government and the king's trying to calm things down so it's a historical fiction with some magic and sounds like just like right up my alley so those are all the books that i hope 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 to get to the month in december I think my original TBR before I was about to start filming this video was like half of that size. And then I was like, no, that's far too realistic. You know, you'll actually read all those books. Pump it up to make it almost undoable for yourself. So I did that. So we'll see how many I actually get done. And this is the last monthly TBR for the year of 2018. So have a very wonderful and safe holidays. You'll see me throughout the month of December. But still, in case you're one of those people that only watches maybe my TBR videos, then have a very safe holidays and 
I hope you get to read as much books in the month of December as I get to. Make sure to check the description box down below. I will link all of the books to their Goodreads pages and I will also link all of my social media. If you follow me, I will follow you 